Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome from impostorsyndrome.com, Valerie Young. And I have a question for all of you. How many of you have ever had that I'm in over my head and they're going to find out feeling. Anybody else had that feeling besides me? Or maybe you've said, if I can do it, how hard can it be? I actually heard a guy say, if I can get a PhD in astrophysics from Caltech, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> One thing all imposters share in common is a distorted, unrealistic, unsustainable definition of competence. It was actually at MIT literally about 20 years ago that a very high-ranking woman administrator here told me she couldn't believe they gave her the job. National Search picked her. She found out after she got the job that there had been this uh, faculty wine and cheese function that the hiring committee had been to. She said, aha, they were drunk. <laughs> Maya Angelou said, I've written 11 books, and every time I write another one, I think, uh-oh, I pulled another one over on everyone, and they are going to find out. This tendency to discount or diminish obvious evidence of our abilities is called the imposter syndrome, whereby, despite evidence to the contrary, sometimes overwhelming, compelling evidence to the contrary, people have a very difficult time internalizing and really owning their achievements. So as you're walking up to the podium or into the meeting or any place where your confidence is shaky, you have to say to yourself, I'm excited. Okay? I'm excited. Okay? You don't believe it, and that's okay. Because now you know that you don't have to feel confident to act confident. You can't share your way out of imposter syndrome. What can you do? Well, for years, I would give my audiences 10 things they could do. And then it was always that one person who would say, uh, but is there anything else we can do? And I would say, well, of the 10 things I just gave you, what have you tried, right? Well, nothing, but is there anything else we can do? It took me a while, but I finally figured out what was happening. What they wanted was to walk in the room feeling like an imposter and walk out of the room not feeling like an imposter. And that's not how it works. In fact, feelings are the last to change. Do you want to stop feeling like an imposter? Then you have to stop thinking like an imposter. And over time, you really will begin to believe the new thoughts. And when you do, you can stop trying to overcome imposter syndrome and instead just use reframing to talk yourself down faster. That way, instead of having an imposter life, you can have an imposter moment. Thank you. <laughs>